We all know what inflation is. We have been taught to fear it. We want governments to employ whatever measures they need to use to curb inflation. Inflation is simple enough for everyone to understand it, though it would be more honest to say, we all understand the simple way governments explain it. We know inflation causes our paychecks to purchase less. Inflation drives up rents, interest rates, the price of necessities and even weakens our international balance of payments. With prices increasing faster than incomes, we are pushed into a lower standard of living and a higher tax bracket. Too much money is chasing too few goods means we need to produce more for less or reduce the money supply by pushing up the interest rate. Most of us associate inflation with government overspending. Governments are an easy target. The state faces infinite wants with unlimited credit. The taxpayer is an immortal being who is eternally pledged to repay all debts created by the state. There are two pipes through which money enters the economy. The government provides money though loans issued by a central bank. The government issues a bond, the central bank buys the bond and the purchase gives the state money to spend. Until the bonds are redeemed, the taxpayer pays the central bank interest on the debt. The question is where the money comes from to redeem the bonds? The money we have was borrowed from the central bank. A sizable portion was spent on meeting interest payment obligations. What is left to pay off the principal? What happens to the economy if this debt is paid off? What do we use for money? The solution to the paradox of unpayable debt created by central banks is to create more and more personal and corporate debt. But there are some people who think we ought to use gold or an asset that can be produced in standardized units and spent into the economy by commercial enterprises, example, a mining business. Commerce is made into the source of new money. If more gold is not found continuously and minted gold will increase in value. Then it becomes more profitable to hoard the gold or other commodity being used for money, than to use it as money. This hoarding of an appreciating asset is called deflation. Money made of an appreciating asset becomes so valuable no one wants to spend it. The original way of creating money was for the state to print or coin whatever money it needed. This creation of fiat money created inflation but it was mostly injurious to banks. To give the state an alternative to the state's printing press, banks were permitted to create money by means of a loan made directly to the consumer and to commercial establishments. This also creates a bank up supply to pay off central bank debt. These explanations about how inflation is created seem reasonable. No one even questions if the explanation addresses the entire problem. The rich, especially those who loan money, hate and fear the government's printing press. Too much money flooding the economy because of government overspending is sure to drive up prices. But what is much worse, at least in the minds of the wealthy, is that money flooding into the market and ending up in the hands of workers, permits debt to be paid off with inflated currency. Government printing of money spends money directly into the productive sector which actually hurts the speculator. Imagine borrowing $10,000 from a speculator, while earning $35 a week and then five years later earning $500 a week because of hyperinflation and a year later making $10,000 a week? This is why governments are not permitted to print money. To protect the interests of the bankers, issuing money was put into the hands of the speculators, the banks. Banks can lend money into the economy and set the rate of interest to ensure they do make money. If someone, private or public, needs money they go to the bank, demonstrate sufficient collateral, and credit is added to their digital account. It is still technically impossible to pay back all debt with borrowed money. Obviously if you borrow 100 and you need to pay back 110 this is inflation. If here is $100 and the next day 110 but the same amount of things to buy, this is inflation. But one ought never to equate correlation with causation. There is a hidden actor in these events, a third party to every exchange. When looking at bank debt we see not just the buyer and seller in a transaction. There is the third party called the bank. The banker and all of the bank's employees live off of the interest on the debt. This living off of interest is called making money work for you. This is an innocuous way of excusing an inexcusable evil. But to truly understand evil we have to look at inflation in a different way. It is not about money losing value, 
that is the least of our worries and certainly not the source of our problems. We have mentioned that overissue of money is associated with it losing value, but this is a symptom of something deeper. To prove this we need only look at non-monetary inflation. This is quite common. We see inflation when we help someone who helps no one back, when we make something that others share in, and generally when people use power to impose concessions on an owner. But what does a non-inflationary system looks like? A non-inflationary system is a system without exploitation. A non-coercive system is no more than you and I helping one another in a formal and reconcilable way. Another way of seeing this is by defining non-inflationary systems as one in which all participants have equal merit. We look at the government printing money as inflationary but printing money does not create any value or anything of value. So printing money and the money printers have no merit. Inflation is a result of people living without merit, they eat without working, they consume without producing, they claim value without creating value. The real evil of inflation and the purpose of it as is common with all evil generally, is to further the one-world fascist state agenda. Inflation is just a symptom of the disease. The idea that justifies socialism and the exploitation of merit is the idea of social justice. Social justice warriors pretend to seek a universal justice. Under this guise socialism is perpetuated. There is no justice for all. There is no common good. There is only merit and the exploitation that leads to inflation. Inflation creates costs for those who were not responsible for the actions that created them. The printing of money and the creation of debt is wrong because they externalize costs onto society and future generations. Printing money pays people to live as dependents, as does the creation of debt. All inflation represents people who live without working. This is the real cause and evil of inflation. The real cause of inflation is not the printing of money or the creation of debt, it is the idleness of many. The more debt and the more money printed the bigger the state gets. The larger the state and its ancillary elements, the more people who can live free and devoid of merit. If you do not produce something others are willing to pay for with their work, you have no merit, your life is of negative value and you are part of the demonic, Babylonian system called in modern days, liberalism.